Hello everyone, I'm Becky Goldsmith and I want to show you an easy way to paint the eyes on the birds in my whimsical quilt garden. So as you can see, let me close in on some of these birds. There are some really cute birds in this quilt and you have the choice of applicating the eye shapes in place on the birds or in some cases what I did was paint those eyes. It's not hard to do and I'm going to show you how. So you'll want to have uh, your templates made from the pattern. So here's the pattern. I'm going to do this eye on the bird. I've made my template for the bird shape and what I did was place the fabric I'm going to use for the bird. Whoops, there went my scissors on top of my sandboard and I traced around the bird shape. Now I can either use these templates, you know, the two eye templates and place them on the fabric using my um, using my overlay to position the template and trace around them or I decided it was just a little bit easier, the sun was shining I took my pattern to my patio door and put it up with the fabric over it and I was able to line up the lines for the um, outside of the bird that I've drawn on the fabric with the lines on the, on the pattern because I could see through the window. It was bright enough, like a light box. It's like a light box on the patio window. And once I got those lined up, I was able to use my chalk pencil and what showed up best for me was the gray chalk and I drew the outside of the eye and the dark inner area of the eye. Let me pull that in so you can see it. So I got that drawn on there. Once you get that drawn, you can set your pattern aside. You won't need it anymore. And I've got a piece of white paper under here. I think it will be easier to work and I think it will be easier for you to see what I'm doing. Now, I like to outline certainly the black shape in the center of the bird's eye. I want to do that with a black paint pen. And the one I've been using lately is this Pentel Gel Roller for fabric. And it makes a nice line on the fabric. It doesn't bleed. It's permanent. It's nice. Um, but you notice I've got some extra fabric out here to the side that I can play with the marker on the fabric before actually drawing on the, the fabric I'm going to use for the bird. And notice too that I have not applicated this bird down. Paint the eye before you applicate the bird on your block. If you applicate it and then mess up the painting, you'll be very unhappy. So. What I'm going to do is come down here and carefully trace the outside part of the dark center of the eye. And because the center of the eye is black, I can go ahead and paint that in with this paint pen. It does a very nice job. Now you have choices. You can ring the outside part of the eye with black and paint it then white or you can just paint it white. In just a second, I've got a I've got a piece in the other room. I'm going to grab it real quick and show you. I have a bird that I'm doing for another block that has little eyes. And see what it looks like when you surround the white with the black. It's kind of cute, but it might be cute without. So what I'll do for this demonstration, we'll paint this with white, and then you can decide, I'll decide with you, we'll decide if it needs black around the outside or not. So I've got some nice brushes here that I'm going to use with my acrylic paint. I'm just going to cut that right there. 
and I'm going to want a relatively small brush so that I've got more control over it. I think I'm going to want that one right there, the smallest of the brushes. Now I'm going to set this aside for just a second so I can show you the paint I'm going to mix up to paint the eye. I'm going to use this heavy body acrylic paint that comes in a tube. This is made by Liquitex and it won't require a lot of paint. Instead of a fancy palette, I very often use a paper or plastic plate. So it's not going to take a lot of paint. I'm just going to squeeze a little bit out there and then recap my paint so I don't make a mess. And then I'm going to use the Liquitex uh, fabric medium. Oh, and you know what? This is upside down for you, I think, so let me turn it this way. I'm using the Liquitex fabric medium. Um, you mix this with the paint, and that was upside down for you too, so let me do that. There's the paint. You mix these two together, and it makes a very nice uh, permanent paint. Oh, you know what? I haven't opened this yet. Look there. So it comes with a, with a cover so that the medium does not dry out before you get it done. And because I don't have this open and I'm going to be impatient on camera, I'm going to jab that right there so that I can get it to open up for me now. And I'm making a mess on my fingers. Well, you know what I'll do here. See, I'm doing this in front of you so that you'll know better and you won't do this yourself. So I've got to clean that off the bottom of my scissors. And I'm going to give up on that and I'll fix that later when I'm off camera. Close that back up on there. Wipe my fingers off. Now we're going to put some of the medium there. And you can read on the instructions how much to mix together. It's usually one part to one part. That's what it says on the thing, on the bottle. It also says to test first for best results. And that's a smart thing to do. I'm using the wooden end of my paintbrush to mix this up. If you've got a palette knife, that's a very nice thing to use. Or uh, there are other tools. Palette knife is, is good. But I don't need one for this. It's such a small little area. Okay, and I think that is mixed pretty well. Alright, that paper towel that I had over here, I'm going to use it to clean off the end of my paintbrush so I don't get that all over me. I'm going to move that back out of the way. And here's my bird. I'm going to move the paint here. Now let me pull in a little bit so you can see me doing this. What you do is you pick up a little bit of the paint with your brush. And this trick that I'm doing right here, if you end up with big wads of paint on your brush, it's harder to use here. If you take the brush and lay it a little bit sideways and pull and twirl it, you can take off some of that excess paint without making a big mess. You know, it leaves enough paint on your brush to work. And you'll notice I'm painting myself carefully up next to that edge. I've got a small enough paintbrush so that I've got control over what I'm doing. And the paint is wet enough that you can work it into the cloth, into the weave of the cloth. But it's not so wet that it's going to get into the cloth and spread wildly. So you want to carefully fill this in. I'm going to stop the camera because I don't know that you need to see me do this whole thing. Because this is the way it works. Just like this with careful filling in. 
I'm going to stop the camera and then I will come back and show you what it looks like once I've got it all painted. I'm back. I've got it painted. It's not dry yet though. I wanted to show you that I have been pretty careful oops it got fuzzy on us. I've been pretty careful about trying to keep the brush strokes smooth here so I'm smoothing these out as I go and letting them follow around the um, curve of the eyeball. Now if you're smart you will stop here and let the paint dry and then go back and add more of both the black paint and the white paint as necessary. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to um, let this dry and then I'll come back and we'll talk about um, how to add more paint once it is dry. I'm back. The bird's eye is dry and I can go back and darken some of these areas. Now you can see that around the black I let it get just the littlest bit fuzzy. So I want to come back and strengthen that line. Make it less fuzzy there where the black meets the white. It's like coloring. This is exactly like coloring and trying to stay inside the lines. And then I can go back, whoops, I'm off the camera. I can go back with my paint and darken up the white areas. Now, you should read the instructions on the jars about heat setting these products, but I tend to think it's a good idea to heat set them. Um, I would uh, use a very hot iron. I would press this from the wrong side of the fabric. I would not press it from the right side. Now I'm going to turn this around so that I can get a better angle on this shape as I'm painting. And you'll notice that when you go back to put more paint on, it goes a little faster the second time because on your first coat you're coaxing the paint into the weave of the fabric. And on the second coat you've already got that base of fabric to work on. So just work slowly even if you've never worked with a paintbrush. This is not a hard thing to do. Uh, have faith in yourself. If you want to, practice first. Now the other thing that, um, the other preparation I've done on my fabric, and I should mention this because it probably helps it behave well as I'm painting it, I have pre-washed my applique fabric. I always, always, always pre-wash my applique fabric. Um, if you haven't pre-washed it and you're trying to paint on top of these fibers, the sizing and finishes in the fabric might prevent the paint from sinking in quite as well as it's doing for me. Alright, now that is not bad. Now I'm going to let this dry again before I come back and add a dark line to the outside of the eye of the bird. I don't know that it needs it, but as long as we're um, all looking at this demonstration, you can see here what it looks like without the black line. We might as well see what it would look like with the black line. Then we'll both know. So, I'll stop the tape now and start again once the white paint is dried.